Hey friends, today I'm Gardening with Creekside. We have a fun project that we are going to get completed this afternoon. We are going to plant two different kinds of clematis in back here in the garden. So stinking excited about this. I have been excited about this uh, since my sweet friend Tina, it's all her fault. I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you, it's Tina's fault that I'm doing this project because she turned me on to Brushwood Nursery in Athens, Georgia. They specialize in growing gorgeous different types of clematis. I will have that linked in the video description. So if you are interested in looking at some clematis, go visit them, tell them that Jenny from Creekside Nursery, Gardening with Creekside sent them to you. Um, so I have got two different kinds. I'm going to plant multiples of each kind. The first one that we're going to do is the um, perennial. Now perennial, I got three of them and they are going to go on the three trellises that are at the patio right behind me. They are going to be planted as companion plantings to my David Austin roses so excited about this because I have heard for years and years that roses and clematis work really well together as companion plantings. Like you can put them basically growing in the same spot and they do really well. So perennial is going to be a beautiful, um, has more of kind of like a purple pink margins on the outside with a more creamy white on the inside, a little bit of veining, then the stamens are a little bit of a purple and a yellow, very nice light airy colors. Because my, I have three different kinds of David Austin roses. They're all in the shades of pink and they're all gonna be roughly around that five foot mark. So by having three different roses, but then the same clematis behind those three roses and the clematis will get to be about six to eight feet tall, which I have got plenty of growth on those um, trellises, arbors, whatever you want to call that. I've got plenty of growth on room for them to grow on that. Now, another thing that I like about perennial is that it is a type three clematis. And you're like, what does that mean? So I'm, I'm talking about the pruning type. So there's a pruning one, two, and three. So perennial is a type three pruning clematis. That means that it blooms solely on new growth, very much like a panicle hydrangea. That also means that we are guaranteed to get new growth every year. Now, I want to share with you how Brushwood sends these clematis to you. So these are equivalent to a one gallon size pot, okay? So they take them out of the pots at the nursery and they put them in nice clear plastic bags and it has the tag taped onto the outside of the, the, the bag. Now, it's not a bare root because when you think bare root, there's no soil, right? It literally is just a bare root. These, all of their clematis are nice and pruned right before they leave because, right, you're going into shipping and you can't have this big, huge, like, clematis vine. It doesn't work really well. So right now I'm not going to take it out of the bag, but just know that there is a massive root system in here. When we plant it, I'll show it to you. And you can see that the new growth is popping up right here. So we're going to plant these perennials at the base of those three trellises behind my David Austin roses. Clematis do like to have, they like to have nice full sun growing conditions, but they like their feet to be shady. So it sounds a little odd. So the top of them likes all that hot sun, but their roots like to be cool. So it works really well if you can have their root system kind of shadowed by another plant. That's why these roses are gonna work perfect for this clematis. So without further ado, we're gonna go up there and we're gonna dig our hole. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna plant these three clematis between the trellis and the roses. All right, so here we are standing at <laughs> in a very warm, toasty spot right here. Uh, this really is like the, one of the hardest, hottest parts of my garden. I have Scepter de Isle right here, which is a gorgeous, I love this shade of pink of a rose. Beautiful. This will be its third spring coming into the garden, it will get nice and big. Now you can probably see that I don't have a whole lot of room between the scepter to aisle and this trellis. I got all these trellises from Gardener Supply. I've had people ask me about that. Go check out Gardener Supply. You can order your own. So my clematis basically is going to go straight in the center of the rows right between the rose and the trellis. Now I don't have a whole lot of room in here and I do have an irrigation line. I can see it because it's very close to the rose. So I'm not going to use my power planter auger just because I don't want to 
destroy like a big root of my rose. So I'm going to use go old fashioned today and use my shovel. So I will pull back my mulch and with clematis, just like any other shrub or perennial, right? You want to make sure that your hole is nice and deep and nice and wide. So that way it loosens up this soil. I'm not so worried about this soil because all of this obviously had to be filled in. This is really great um, soil that we brought in because this is right not a natural area for soil to be in. My main concern is not to get poked by Scepter de Isle because she is a very thorny rose. So I'm gonna get my hole dug, then I will use, of course, my Biotone Starter Fertilizer in the bottom of the hole, and then I'm gonna show you exactly how I'm gonna place the clematis in the hole. All right, so I got my hole dug and it is deeper than what it needs to be, which I would prefer that because I can easily backfill. Um, and so what I did is I just took the plant while it's still in the bag and put it in basically we want the the new growth to be even that soil line to be even with my existing soil line so it's just a little bit too deep so what we're going to do is just take some soil and just toss it back in there right and then come in with your biotone starter fertilizer again avoiding the rose so that we don't get poked scepter to isle does not play with her thorns and then we're going to very gently carefully Take the clematis out of the bag. Now you're probably going to lose some soil and that's all right. Um, it's not a problem. Remember plants are a lot tougher than we give them credit for and it did get shipped all the way from Georgia. Georgia. Here we go. So look at that. See all those nice really pretty happy healthy roots. Now I am not going to come in here and start hacking at this. I am going to leave it alone. I do not want to destroy this plant. Did I lose some soil? Yes. Is it okay? Yes. Am I worried? No. All right. So here we go again. This is called gardening uh, acrobatics here. I think we're in the center because I think this is the center of the trellis, which makes me happy. All right. We're going in here, avoiding the rows. Can you imagine if I was trying to do this when the rose was actually like, you know, flushed out? I don't think I'd be able to do it. So we're just going to take our native soil and we're going to backfill, come in here, gardening yoga at its finest, folks. Secure her in there. Push, push, push. Now, clematis like to have, um, you know, nice, consistent, moist temperatures, not, uh, not temperatures, conditions, not soggy, but nice and consistently moist, especially when you're trying to get them established and get them going. Um, so I do have irrigation here. The irrigation line is this black line right here. There's a emitter right on the rose. So what we'll do is we'll come back and we'll punch another emitter and I'll probably have like a little bit of a, a tube and have it brought right back here to the clematis. So we're just gonna kind of come back in here, backfill everybody, make sure they're nice and happy. You could absolutely, if you wanted to, add some like land and sea compost or whatever high quality compost you like and top dress around that. I'm gonna come back and do this whole bed later, so I'm not gonna worry about it right now. And starting tonight and for the next two days, we're supposed to get lots and lots of rain. So my ground is already moist. The clematis is moist coming from brushwood, so I don't have to worry about that. And then we're going to get two days of solid rain. There's plenty of water that's headed this way, so I'm just going to leave it how it is. I'm going to come over here and we're going to fill in, just backfill a little bit and get her tucked in. All nice and neat right here. And brushwood says that you should get for the vast majority of their clematis, you will get flowers the first year. So that's very exciting to have lots of flowers. And clematis too tend to be very rapid growers. So that is great news. They are self twining, climbing. So I may have to help it here once in a while just to tuck somebody back in. But as opposed, like if you're trying to do a rose, which definitely like you have to attach it to something if you want it to climb, even if it is a climbing rose, clematis will naturally send out those tendrils and wrap around things. So there we go. Six to eight feet of perennial. It's going to be gorgeous right here behind Scepter de Isle. Now I've got two more clem uh, clematis on the trellises to go. So basically we're just going to rinse and repeat, do the exact same thing with these next two.
All right, my friends, so just like that, we got all three of the perennial clematis put in really super simple like i said the hardest part is avoiding the roses so that you don't get poked and scratched and start bleeding um, but it is not going to take long for these to grow six to eight feet gorgeous flowers mixed in with the roses it is going to be stunning and even when they're not blooming just to have that different leaf texture and that height that vertical height here on these three trellises is going to be fantastic now if you're new to gardening with creekside in this whole little space this patio really is like it is full sun from early morning until late in the afternoon it's quite a challenging place to even film because it is so bright right here and it's hard to get kind of the right angles and the right light but it works really well for these plants that love the heat and all of these plants do the clematis the roses the boxwoods everything loves the heat right here and will do really well it is on irrigation i will say that again also the main time we use this in the summertime is like like late afternoon into evening and tonight so with the colors around directly around the patio i want to keep them very light and so like whites light pinks light blues those colors that are very cool because when the landscape lighting turns on or we have a fire going in the fire pit those colors reflect the light and you will see that at night now as we move away from the patio then that is where i use my more bold intense colors what we're going to do now is we're going to head over to the lovely garden shed which used to be our it was our original chicken coop and we have loosely turned it into a garden shed it still needs a lot of work for a garden shed but we just call it the garden shed because it sounds better than the old ex garden chicken coop um, but on this the little shed part that extends that was the chicken run right so that's where the chickens went outside and would play and be free right now it's a hot mess we're going to fix that begin to fix that with the next set of clematis that we're going to go plant over there so let's move over there and let me show you what we're going to do all right my friends so here we are standing between the tea olives and the garden shed aka the old chicken coop now i know some of you may be looking at this and going jenny that is just like that is sad looking why in the world are you showing us all your warts yeah because I am a real life gardener here folks I am a mama of three we run multiple businesses and life is not perfect never will be never has been and my garden is never perfect so if I wait for things to be perfect and to look perfect then nothing would ever get done so I'm just going to show it to you how it is yes you can see the lawnmower yes you can see some firewood for the fire pit and this is probably less than desirable area that my friends is why we're going to plant two more clematis right here so that they can grow up behind these early wonder camellias along with the white clematis that i already have growing right here this is a henry eye clematis um, beautiful pure white flowers i planted this last year between these two early wonder camellias yes they are small camellias take a little while to grow these are beautiful um very gorgeous um, japonica type camellias that do beautiful early that's why it's called early wonder because it will actually bloom earlier than other japonicas big huge massive double hot pink they will eventually get to be in that five ish six ish somewhere foot mark but camellias are notoriously slow growers so that is why we're going to plant two liberty clematis one over here and one right here they're going to be a beautiful like multicolored pink with some creamy white in it so you're going to have lots of different colors on that same plant that will really pair very beautifully with all of these other plants that go in here now the odds that the clematis the liberty clematis is going to be blooming the same time as the camellia is pretty slim if it did it would be like if the camellias were blooming late and the clematis was blooming early so those probably are not going to bloom at the same time but even if they did their colors would complement each other very nicely the odds that the liberty and the henry eye are going to bloom at the same time pretty probable uh, but it's going to be pure white with a nice lovely pink you will see that we have some residual vines that left on here i planted last year the coconut appeal 
Black-Eyed Susan vine from Proven Winners. It's a great annual vine. It's Black-Eyed Susan and it covers the whole thing. So you can see like Jerry and I just went through here and pulled out a lot of the old vines, but a lot of these are still stuck in there. It's okay. The clematis will grow and it will cover it up and not a problem. I totally have forgotten to look at the specs for the Liberty, so I will put those up on the screen for you. This is going to be a pruning type number two, though, in the fact that it blooms on old and new growth. So that means like late winter, what I want to do is just give it a light prune. So give it a light prune, and then that way we have gorgeous foliage and beautiful flowers on it. So basically, I am going to plant it just a little bit all centered. I'll probably plant the first one somewhere right in here. We do have a water spigot right here. It is concreted in the ground, so it's going to, based on where that concrete is, will determine like where I actually plant the clematis. And then the other one basically will come right behind this early wonder because clematis not only do they grow up but they grow out so it's not that you're going to see exactly where the base is because it's going to fill in these areas quite nicely i do have um, my land and sea compost because this is my native soil so i'm going to amend this because it's not as rich as what we were dealing with over there in the patio but basically it's going to be the same i'm going to dig my hole i'm going to add in some compost mix it in really well with the native soil use my biotone fertilizer put the clematis in backfill and then i'm going to top dress with land and sea so uh, yeah let's just go for it All right, my friends, and just like that, we've got five brand new clematis in the garden. So excited about this. I cannot wait to watch these sweet babies grow and develop and then bloom later on this season. It's gonna be really, really fun if it turns out half as good in my brain, like in reality as it is in my brain, it's gonna be spectacular. So, you know, just always be out there looking for fun new things that you can add to your garden. There are some fantastic, amazing, wonderful plants out there. And, you know, ask your friends, just talk to your gardening friends, whether it's in-person friends or social media friends or gardening groups or whatever, you get some of the best ideas from other gardeners, just like my sweet friend Tina gave me this idea and inspiration to add these clematis to my garden. So take that little nugget and then just run with it in your own garden. Um, so check out Brushwood if you're interested in ordering some clematis. I have talked about this just in a video just a couple of days ago, and I know some people are, have already found some fantastic ones for their growing zone. Whether you think you're too cold or too hot, I'm sure that Brushwood is gonna have something for you. So have fun looking at that. I will go ahead and say I'm sorry, not sorry for turning you on to this fantastic nursery and all of their beautiful plants. As always, I hope you have found this fun and interesting and informative and that you have found some inspiration in your garden. Just get out there and have fun, y'all. Gardening is supposed to be fun. It is not supposed to be stressful. Um, you're supposed to get out there and enjoy it. As always, thanks so much for Gardening with Creekside. We will see y'all in the next video. Bye, friends.